Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and I finally have a new comprehensive review, this time about Spin Master's Paw Patrol. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, we'll be there on Yeah, I know what you're thinking. My first review of a Spin Master product in years, and it's Paw Patrol? Well, hear me out. Debuting in 2013, Paw Patrol is a highly successful kids series that was basically responsible for pulling Spin Master's butt out of the fire that was Redakai. So yeah, if that rumored Bakugan remake is still happening, you can thank Paw Patrol for it. Now, what is Paw Patrol? Paw Patrol is a show about a group of six talking dogs... Rocking rocks? Rats crazy! Like you said it, Scoobs! These dogs are the Paw Patrol, a rescue team who wear special packs of equipment and whose dog houses transform into a fleet of rescue vehicles. They're led by Ryder, their owner who commands the missions and even joins them on his transforming ATV. Man, he must have quite the disposable income to do all of this. Money, money, money is all you need. Paw Patrol is on a roll! I especially love how the pups shatter his body during the intro. <laughs> Together, these pups perform various rescues and other good deeds. There are rarely any out-and-out -out villains in the series, with the usual antagonist being a guy named Mayor Humdinger and his little band of Faw Paw Patrol cats, whose antics are more often the results of his selfish incompetence rather than actual malice. The actual rescues come in a wide variety, from small antics occurring in their hometown of Adventure Bay, to rescues made many miles away, to sometimes unfortunately believing that repairing a high-grade spaceship with junkyard scrap metal will make it capable of returning to outer space. We have Chase, a German Shepherd police dog. Chase is on the case! And Marshall, a Dalmatian fire dog. I'm fired up! Along with them is Zuma, a water rescue chocolate lab, because as we all know, Labradors love the water. Let's dive in! And Sky, a cockapoo, which is a cross between a poodle and a cocker spaniel, who is a high-flying air rescue pup because, as we all know, cockapoos love jetpacks. This puppy's gotta fly! We have Rubble, the heavy equipment using English Bulldog, who thankfully wasn't given a funny accent. Rubble on the double! And finally, Rocky, a mutt who does... recycling. Is it just me, or does that seem a little out of place on a rescue team? I mean, we have police, fire, water rescue, air rescue, mountain rescue, wilderness rescue, heavy equipment, and... recycling. It, it doesn't seem to quite jive. I mean, when you think of, like, superheroes, like, what kind of superhero would be into recycling? Captain Planet, he's a hero. Never mind. But to be fair, it's probably because minor repair and improvised solutions is too long for the kiddies to remember. Green means go, go, go! Now, something that actually surprises me is that, despite the show running for nearly four years, they've only introduced two new characters, a Siberian husky named Everest... Sometimes I practice rescuing penguins, but they never say thank you, or anything. ...who might be a little crazy... Your coat's so awesomely warm. The fleas think so, too. Fleas? Gotcha! They all died of exposure! Ha ha ha! And Tracker, a chihuahua who can Spider-Man around on a pair of grappling hooks and specializes in wilderness rescue. Which goes into how the show refreshes itself every season. Rather than introducing a ton of new characters like some shows are wont to do... Paw Patrol instead works a little like Ninjago in that they work to maintain the characters they already have by giving each new season a new set of more specialized equipment, such as jungle gear or air rescue gear or the newest series, the spy gear for Mission Paw. What, was the name Mission Impossible already taken? <laughs> Tying in with the spy theme, a lot of the Mission Paw rescues take place in a London analog called Barkingburg, with the Mission Paw equipment being more sleek and stylized, featuring smaller rescue vehicles meant for more covert operations. It also introduces a new villain in the form of Sweetie, a sort of anti-pup character who uses her gadgets for evil. All in all, it's an okay show. A lot of the jokes land well, and the pups are polite, even if Ryder seriously needs to watch where he's throwing that frisbee- OW! See? It's also pretty easy to find, as you can watch episodes on NickJr.com or on the Nick Jr. app. It's perhaps a little too toyetic, but I've confessed to being a fan of a show that's just as toyetic, if not more, so fair's fair. As to the toys, thanks to how successful the show is, there is a huge variety of toys that come in a number of different price points, ranging from the little figures that you can find in any dollar store to the larger playsets seen here that were provided me by Spin Master for the purpose of review. 
they also definitely benefit from the scale of their packaging meant to convey their value. The most popular toys seem to be the basic figures that include their backpack gadgets and the larger vehicle sets that include a pup and their doghouse vehicle. There are no actual transforming doghouses as far as I know, but those would be pretty cool. The figures are pretty basic with a couple of action gimmicks and some posability. There is a huge variety to these figures, with some including special badges and others featuring mission cards. They tend to put out a new version of each character when a new series of rescue gear is introduced, so if your kid has a favorite character, they will not be short on stuff to get. I mean, unless they're fans of Everest or Tracker. <laughs> Good luck with those. Another discount series they have is the Roll Patrol, which are these little standalone vehicles that are designed to be smaller. These figures in here are basically the same scale as the little dollar figures, which cannot be removed, which are designed to work with playsets such as this one, Zuma and Sky's Lighthouse Rescue. The set has a few action gimmicks and several pieces of road which are meant to combine with other playsets in order to form the city of Adventure Bay. In this case, it's a little launch ramp where Zuma can roll around and save the day while Sky does donuts around the lighthouse. Jay, stop this crazy thing! Now for a while, Spin Master's actually been feeling around for a kind of middle ground in between their figures and the larger vehicle sets, and I think these latest mission paw sets have kind of got the right idea with their smaller, more specialized vehicles. A lot of them actually have some really cool gimmicks, such as Skies, which turns from a motorcycle into a hovercraft? That's actually really cool! Now, on the subject of Mission Paw, while Paw Patrol has had several large command vehicles in the past... There's the troop carrier, the troop transport, and the action figure storage truck. <laughs> Sorry. In this case, the Mission Paw command vehicle goes along with the more conservative nature of Mission Paw in general with the Mission Cruiser, a bus-shaped transport vehicle that comes with RoboDog, obviously based on Spin Master's Zoomer Dog, and a few cool features, including the ability to store and deploy up to three of the smaller vehicles as well as stash a mission card in the special screen. You can also sit RoboDog, Ryder, or any of the other pups in the front. I mean, it's no Paw Patroller, but it's designed to be a lower price point as well. Now, I've mentioned mission cards a few times in this review, but what are they meant for? In this case, it's for the Mission Pup Pad, yet another device meant to compete for the wrists of little kids. Seriously, I'm running out of space here! The Mission Pup Pad is a surprisingly complex little device, actually. In its base form, the Pup Pad is a large sort of wristwatch with a few buttons that make the Paw Patrol shout their catchphrases. But the device's true nature comes out when you insert the mission cards, of which the pad itself comes with six. Most Mission Paw toys come with another card, and they are related to actual episodes from the show, such as one where Barking Bird Castle is haunted by moving suits of armor. The cards actually have a barcode on the back of them that the pad scans when it's inserted, at which point Ryder will chime in and say what the mission is. At this point, it's up to you to make sure you pick the right pups to complete the mission. Chase, I need you and your night vision. Chase, it's on the case. It's actually pretty engaging thanks to all the unique dialogue and uses some basic cognitive and problem-solving skills. No job is too big, no pup is too small. I actually really like the mission pup pad. It adds a little bit of extra fun to every single set and it does an astonishing amount for only 20 bucks. Not bad. Now, if only they made something I could stash these cards in. Anyway, Paw Patrol, for lack of a better phrase, really is on a roll and has become a perennial favorite among kids shows. And even though I'm not a dog person, I can still see why. The characters are decently written and not annoying, the comedy lands in most cases, and some of the episodes can actually get pretty intense. A few shows have appeared that try to challenge it, such as PJ Masks, but I think it's safe to say that the pups are here to stay. It's a perfectly entertaining line that doesn't talk down or preach to its audience, and it, along with Doc McStuffins, seem to have ushered in a new age of children's programming along with that whole saving Spin Master's butt so they can remake Bakugan thing. Spin Master as a whole seems to be in a more stable location, so hopefully that Bakugan remake that they've been shipping around to their investors becomes a real thing, and this channel can get a new breath of life. But until then, please subscribe and make sure you ring the bell so that you don't miss a single episode, and this is Kodox signing off. Those loonies are gonna blow up the ocean! Quick, everyone! To the action figure storage vehicle! Buy all our playsets and toys!